Hey everyone, welcome to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and today we're going to discuss the highs and lows of co parenting. Almost 75% of the 1.2 million Americans who divorce each year remarry and create new family designs for their children. In the book Blend, Mashonda T. Freer shares honest and intimate details on how she's raising her son with ex Swiss Beats and his wife, Alicia Keys, showing how communication and patience create an environment where children can thrive. Please help me welcome Mashonda T. Freer. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I took some of those stats from your book. So. I mean, I was listening like, that sounds so familiar, but it sounds so good coming yeah, out. Good yeah. job on your research. Thank you. um, so first, let's talk about just the process of getting to this book, because obviously you've been doing this co-parenting thing for a while now, and it's been a journey of highs and lows. So why did you think now was the time that you wanted to share kind of what you've learned? So many reasons. Um, the first being that the journey has been amazing. It's, we, we are at a really successful place. And um, you mentioned the stats, and it's a universal topic. And so many people are dealing with it in America alone. And those children, they need, they need us to be present for them. And I wanted to use my experience in a way to really help heal the world. It's, it's, it's like my, it's my gift to the culture. There's so, I mean, I see it so often in my own family and my friends, how that communication breaks down almost immediately. Yeah. And it just leads to years of frustration for everybody involved. Totally. And what I love about your book is that it really starts off with you taking a look at yourself yes. and your responsibilities in the dynamic. So why was that important for you to kind of look inside yourself and do some work there? Well, that's where it starts. You know, um, anytime you're dealing with a relationship, a breakup, a separation, a divorce, any kind of dynamic between two people, there's always so much ego involved. And when things don't turn out the way you expected or wanted, it's like a war. Now, the, the issue with that war is that when there's children involved, it hurts them the most. So Blend was written from a place of being hyper-aware conscious and really wanting to create a blueprint for those people in need or that desire some assistance in moving through that, that really dark place. But as you said, it really does start within, from within. You can't blend or have a decent relationship with anyone until you really understand yourself. So there's a lot of self-work that has to go into it before you can move on to the other steps. What did that self-work look like for you? That self-work was deep. <laughs> I mean, it took years. And it's not something that you can rush. You really have to allow time to do its thing. And time is a healer, but you are the ultimate healer of yourself. So I gave myself that time. I didn't rush it. I didn't rush them. They needed time, too. We all just had to Walk down, walk down the path and, and really appreciate the journey, the dark moments, the, the highs, the lows, and do the work. Yeah. And uh, as anybody who is a fan of either any of you, um, we know that it wasn't always easy. And publicly, there were things that were said and things that were in blogs and yeah. tweets. And, it, you know, even watching it felt painful because I could feel the pain and what was going on. Mm. Did that make the whole process just that much harder? Yeah. I mean, at first, we were all so emotional. Um, you know, there's celebrities involved, so it was public, which amplified the pain and the embarrassment and the shame. Um, so that created a lot of tension between us as well. And, you know, our culture kind of feeds off of people's downfalls on social media. And you can't really look to Instagram or Twitter for self-improvement or real support because the comments are like, whoa, you know, everyone's sitting behind their screen and just, just letting go. But no one's really saying, you know, surrender, take time, heal. And so it was really important for all three of us to realize, let's just start shifting this energy and making this what it needs to be for our children. And you, you mentioned the energy and your son I, was probably a big part of that. You yeah. talk about how he was, you know, going back and forth between your house and his dad's and he was starting to ask questions yeah. like, why can't mom come see my room here and things like that. Um, and then you 
you write that these questions signaled that Kasim was absorbing the negative negativity between his father and me. Instead of enjoying a carefree, innocent childhood, he was wrestling with very adult emotions. Mm. That's a lot that's on a, a kid. Lot, but that's what happens, right? I mean, our children, they pay such close attention to us. You know, they have their own little kitty issues. You know, they go to school, they feel peer pressure, they've got stress from homework, they've got, you know, competition on the soccer field. The last thing they need to do is come home to their safe place and feel drama from their parents and have to deal with that energy in their home. So I wanted that to be his safe place. And that work started with us. Yeah. And what was the moment where you finally looked at Suez and you're like, all right, let's, let's talk. Oh my God. That was definitely when, um, like my son was around six years old and I had a parent teacher meeting and, you know, they told me that he was struggling. He was uh, being emotional. He was acting out. And I know my son and I know that's not who he is, but it all boil boiled down to him grappling with our stuff, you know, he was trying to figure out, well, how can I deal with being a six-year-old, but also dealing with my mom and dad's negative energy? And I didn't want that for him. I came from a home that had that energy, and that stuff stays with you throughout your entire life. You know, I still look at my parents, and I wish that they would have figured it out for me and my sister. So I wanted to give my son something better. And you start to, I think, really see that cycle, yes. right? And wanting to stop that Hurt cycle. adults raise hurt children yeah. all the time. What's really amazing, and I think shows how much progress you guys have made as a family, is that Swizz wrote an entire chapter yes. in this book, really yes. collaborating and sharing his side, which I think is so important because so often it's a he said, she said. Absolutely. But really, he was sharing, like, what has influenced his, him as a father and... I think it's really important, one, to hear that story. Totally. And to, two, see how it connects with you and Kasim. Yeah. I mean, I asked uh, Swiss and Alicia to be a part of this project about three years ago because I didn't want it to just be in my voice. I mean, it's blend, so it made sense for the family to each have, like, a part in it. Yeah. And it made it so much more powerful. Yeah. And I'm sure it means something for your son, too. Totally. This you know? is, like, our legacy. It's a gift to our children our family, the culture. You mentioned Elisa, Alicia wrote, uh, she wrote the foreword. Yes. And I love that she wrote, you know, there was a time where each of us felt misunderstood. And here I am now helping you, like, write the intro to your book. Crazy, like, right? Like, how far we like, come. Like, who would have thought? So what is that relationship like now? It's beautiful. It's a sisterhood. Yeah. We've put in so much work. I mean, we talk on the phone, like, every other day because we have to schedule you know, we're, we're talking about Kasim, And when we're not talking about Kasim, we're just talking about being women, yeah. you know, being mothers. So it's possible. I just want women to know that it's possible. You do not have to hate your, your son's new co-parent. You don't have to hate your ex's new girlfriend. You know, if there's a child involved, you could do more than just drop the kid off and, mm -hmm. no, get out the car, Say hello. This is the woman that's putting your kid to sleep at night. You know, why don't you want to know a little more about her? And you said that it, it was important to your son. He wanted you to like He wanted other. it. And that's what really pushed me. Yeah. He wanted us to like each other. He would say, um, you know, I would call him <laughs> when he was there, and we'd talk, and then he'd say, Mommy, you want to say hi to Alicia? <laughs> and I'm like, this little slickster, <laughs> you know? And that was his way of pushing us together. But you got to go with that. And uh, we know that they have two sons together. Yeah. And so how did that impact the dynamic now that Kasim was an older brother? You know, how did that change your viewpoint of the dynamic? I think it made it so much more beautiful because he's got two little brothers that completely adore him. They look up to him. They're so cute. And it just makes the family just feel more purposed, you know? Because you know they're going to be connected forever. Forever. And you're setting the tone for their relationship. I mean, that's a lot of responsibility. There's a part in the book. Um, it's the part where me and Alicia have our first moment together. And uh, we... The first dinner. Our first dinner. <laughs> Not the last summer, yeah. the first dinner. And she, you know, she planned it so beautifully. We met downstairs in a basement. We had the whole thing to ourselves. And the day before, I was in my head like, what am I going to say? Like, this is crazy. 
So I get there, and I asked God to speak through me. And the first thing out my mouth was, I don't want to talk about the past. All that matters is that one day we're going to share grandchildren. And it's like, when you look at it like that, you have to let go of the negativity. Because our babies are going to have babies, and we're going to be senior citizens <laughs> with these babies, you know? So we can't afford to be negative. And you use the term golden girls. That's my girl. They, so that's my golden girl. That's your golden girl. But explain <laughs> the backstory of the golden girls in your life, because I think that yeah. obviously influenced how you decided ultimately to approach the dynamic. I came from a very strong upbringing of women. Women raised me, and two very dynamic women in my life. The number one is my grandmother. She raised me. But she formed this amazing relationship with my father's father, new wife. Okay. So she had her own blended family. And she didn't get along well with my grandfather, but she adored his wife. <laughs> and I always looked at it like, I don't get this, yeah. you know? Because we'd be in their house, she wouldn't have much to say to him, but they were best friends and they, grew old together, traveled the world together. All throughout the book, you'll see photos of them and their evolution because that really was my blueprint. Mm -hmm. And then just like one day I woke up, and you know, we don't understand sometimes why we feel so strongly about something because it's like, it's, it's a subconscious, unconscious type of thing. But I realized, wow, I, I know this is gonna work because I lived it already. And Isn't it was amazing? in me, and I just knew it, it was possible because I've witnessed it. So that's the Golden Girl story. That also <laughs> speaks to, I think, just the power of women when they work together. And you see it throughout Anything history. You see it in different civilizations. You see it with, I mean, all over the world. It's like when women decide to work together, that's it. Done. Yeah, it's a game changer. Yeah. But it's hard to get there. Hard, because we hold on to so much... We've got these big emotions and, you know, but once you really do that work and let go, anything is possible. And my, my end game and my mission for everything that I do in life is that women have to empower one another. Yeah. We have to. I think it's important to note, though, too, that you guys weren't afraid to ask for help. So you talk about the gift of therapy in your own personal journey yeah. and then also using a mediator Absolutely. to come in and work with the three of you. Yeah. So what tips do you have? Because there's a stigma against that in a lot of different communities of color. Totally. But how important was bringing in a third party for you to kind of help you through it? It was the game changer mm -hmm. because we just couldn't understand how to navigate on our own. We tried, but we kept running into this wall. And we're like, well, what is this wall? Why can't we... And once we started bringing people in, and they started observing and then breaking it down from like a place where there was no judgment, they were just giving their like professional wisdom. <laughs> that was it. So now what we do is we, we have those sessions at least once every three months. And it's so healthy because we just get to say whatever we need to and it's great. And we do it with, with Kasim too. See, I love that you're still having sessions. I, I didn't glean that from the book. So you're, sa you're also saying you have to keep working at it. Totally. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. Blending is a lifestyle, you know. Um, and if you really want it to work, it's good to just have constant communication. And uh, before we go to audience questions, I want to point out that you left a space at the end of each chap chapter for reflections. Yes. So what are you asking people to fill those pages with? Their own experiences, um, quotes that really resonated with them. Um, I, I'm a, I love to journal. This book came from many journals throughout the past eight years. So I love when people like get it all out on paper. I do feel I journal as well. I've had a journal since I was like 14. And I think once you write it, you can't really deny it anymore. Exactly. You face it. Yeah. Especially when it's like your own stuff. Yes. You're like, all right, yeah, maybe I'm not being, I'm not compromising. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right, let's go to the audience really quick for some questions. Who do we have first? No. <clears throat> Hi. Um, I was just wondering if, through, like, the process of writing the book, do you think you've ever, like, found something more about yourself through that process? 
Yeah, totally. I would say that the blend is not only about the blending with the co-parents, it's really about blending yourself. Because I, I dug so deeply into Mashanda. Like I went into my own childhood and found all these wounds and traumas and I was forced to acknowledge them and heal them. And that's what took me to present day Mashanda because now I understood her more because I paid attention to my inner child. So you will learn a lot about yourself. <laughs> but I, that's so Im important though, because how are you supposed to be a doting, attentive parent if you're not really right figuring out your own stuff? Exactly, it's almost like we're supposed to heal our children, but how could we heal our children if we're not healed? Next question. Hi, um, I think it's so amazing what you're doing right now, especially for the, the community. Um, just a question, uh, you talked about the ego. So how do you, do you have any recommendations or any ways to drop in and see how do you actually start with the ego and where that mm. comes from? So I think the easiest way to describe the ego I read a book and I recommend it to everyone. It's called The Secret of Letting Go by an author called Guy Fenley, Life Changer. It was the first book that I read um, coming out of my separation and it really broke down the ego for me and I was able to identify more. But for me, the ego is whenever you find yourself operating at a lower frequency. It's that lower version of yourself. It's the part of you that and you'll know right away, because you won't feel as good. You won't feel empowered. It makes, you, it makes you judge. It makes you blame. It, it, it just completely, it makes you look at life on a very low level. So in my everyday life now, with everything I do, I'm able to check myself so quickly when I feel myself falling into ego because I know what it is. And then I just lift myself back up and operate out of love. Love is the opposite of ego. The ego is reactive, it sounds it's like. It's super reactive. Yeah. And, and we need it a little bit because it's that part of us that makes us protect ourselves. Totally. You know? You just have to know how to balance it. Yeah. But this book is very proactive. Absolutely. Right. Yes. <laughs> and last question. Hi. Hi. Um, so my question is, so for people who are teens and my age, how would you say is the best way for us to support our friends and classmates who might be going through their parents having a divorce or being a part of a new blended family? That's such a good question because my son, he's like, he's like his ther the therapist amongst his friends. <laughs> And all of his friends, they're going through like, you know, their parents are getting ready to be divorced. They come and talk to him about it. Aww. And it's so sweet. And he just, you know, he lets them know that it's okay. I'm dealing with it too. You know, it'll, it'll be a little tricky at first because you'll have to go to different homes. And he says it like from this really sweet, innocent child way. But um, I think the best advice is to, to communicate. You know, if you feel a way, let it out. Let your parents know. Talk to family. Don't hold things in, because that's when it just boils over. So communication, key. I force my son to talk to me in the nicest way. But it's a constant conversation. Babe, are you OK? You know, there's a way to finesse it. You all right? How was school? The friends treating you good? You know, little things. But I know what I'm doing. I want to know, you know? So. <laughs> And it sounds like when you empower them to, to talk to their parents about what's going on, that might trigger something in the parents, right? Like to it did for change. you to treat each other more nicely in yes. respect. And my son was, he came into this world just knowing that he was going to rock my world. I swear, because he came with all these questions and concerns and he really made me look at myself like, you need to fix yourself. So listen to your kids. They're small and they're little, but those souls are so big. They definitely do come here for a reason. 
and know that you're helping them to be more well-rounded adults, right? Yes. Like that's the end goal for everyone. That's the goal. That's what I took from Blend. And like I, I told you in the back, it was so relatable for me with my own family and other yeah. friends. And so I think it's such a positive and needed message. Totally. So thank you for writing this book. It is thank available you. today. Today is Anywhere the birthday. books are sold. Guys, give it up for Mashana T. <laughs> thank <Fair>. you. <laughs>